Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. You are still watching NTV Weekend Edition. Now, a day after International Women's Day, we continue to look at this year's theme for the celebrations, Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress. We look at some of the issues affecting the progress of youthful women in their respective communities. Now, Topista Kiza, a program coordinator at the African Youth Development Link, is here to share that conversation with us. Good evening. Topista. Good evening. And thank you for joining us. Thanks for hosting me. Again. Happy belated Women's Day. Happy belated Women's Day too. Yes. Now, in line with uh, the theme uh, for this year, which is uh, Invest in Women, Accelerate Progress, we'd like to start with um, understanding the current status of women in this regard when we talk about uh, their participation, especially in the business uh, sector. Yeah, so uh, looking at the current uh, status, we need to appreciate the fact that there is some good progress. There is some go good progress. We are seeing uh, a lot of women that are, are doing well in business, mm. yeah, and that are employing uh, a lot of uh, other people. We are seeing uh, a lot of wom women who have advanced, especially in the area of uh, agriculture. And then uh, we are also seeing uh, a lot of women that are championing, uh, uh, you know, empowerment of their fellow women in terms of uh, capacity building and ensuring that uh, these women are able to have access to uh, capital to start up businesses. We see a lot of uh, skilling uh, programs in, in place, both uh, by government and also uh, development partners, civil society organizations that are geared towards uh, empowering women in business and uh, other spheres of life so that they are able to uh, try and compete favorably. Mm. While we are not yet there where we think uh, uh, women should be, but we appreciate the fact that uh, uh, we now can uh, say that we are at around like 35 uh, percent mm. if you look at uh, the current statistics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is 35 percent good enough? Shouldn't we be like at uh, you know 50 or 60 or? Uh, it isn't. It isn't good enough uh, because of uh, the factors, uh, including the fact that uh, we still have a lot of women who um, do not have access to productive uh, resources, including uh, if you look at uh, women who have access to and who can uh, use land mm. for production those are still few and then also if you look at uh, those women that are really able to be able to access capital to start up a business or uh, be able to invent or start up something uh, they are really few uh, if you look at uh, the urban centers at least there are um, some opportunities for those women that are in urban centers but if you look uh, up country um, in our villages in those districts the challenges are still quite so very many and given the kind of uh, society that we live in it's a patriarchal society so, mm. so, so given that uh, uh, men uh, make all the decisions there is a fact that uh, for most of the women that are involved even in starting up a business or even uh, engaged in agriculture even when they harvest their produce uh, they don't have uh, um, uh, they don't have that uh, power the authority to make decisions on when to sell how to sell and how to use the produce the proceeds from that yes, and we see a lot of men still influence decisions especially for even if a business is for a woman, mm. they will determine mm. who will sell and how the money from that will be utilized. Okay. Yeah. But you know, uh, there are some uh, interventions that the government, you know, has put in place to address some of these issues. Yeah. Uh, would you, in your where from where you sit, what mm -hmm. are some of these interventions that the government has put to address some of the issues that you have highlighted? Yeah, so we appreciate the fact that uh, we have policies in place. The government has put up uh, policies in place. If you look at uh, the gender policy that we have, it is so much in support of uh, women's economic uh, empowerment. And uh, if you look at uh, programs, government has put in place programs that those programs that are specific to women, the Women, uh, the women Empowerment Fund, mm -hmm. but also in the other general programs, I think there is some uh, affirmative action where uh, there is a percentage cut that is supposed uh, to be taken on by women. But still, uh, the fact that women are unable to make decisions, that still affects them. And also access to information. There are a lot of women, especially at the grassroots, who don't know that these programs exist and even how to be able to access them. And so, so how, how can they be helped to that effect? So uh, for those women to be helped, first of all, is that uh, I think uh, a lot of uh, decisions are still being made at the center 
and people are not consulted. For example, if you look at uh, most of uh, the women, if I can speak about the young people at the grassroots, uh, we have a lot of them who are products of the effects of teenage pregnancies. And so they take on motherhood while they are still uh, so very young. They have not attained uh, a good uh, quality education that enables them to interpret uh, some of this information and guidelines that are in English. Mm. And yet there is very less sensitization. We know that uh, 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 for local governments, if they are to do mass sensitization of the people, they do that through the Office of Community Development. Mm -hmm. But of late, the budget for community mobilization and mindset change has been cut by 80%. So we have community development officers who hardly have resources or money to go sensitize people in communities. Mm -hmm. Government uh, 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 sends out or sensitizes people through media like uh, TVs and radio stations. But we have many of the women at the grassroots who cannot still access that information mm -hmm. and we know that we are now in a digital era where everything is uh, getting digital businesses are done digitally but I think women still are disadvantaged in uh, terms of access uh, to uh, digital um, to the digital equipment but also uh, the cost of uh, data is still high mm -hmm. for a people uh, at the grassroots to be able to access to, to access but also the penetration of internet mm -hmm. is still a challenge and that still affects women okay so what uh, which relevant laws I know you have already highlighted uh, a few but which relevant laws and policies do you think uh, are in place to facilitate the response to you know women economic empowerment and women economic inclusion so uh, but we have uh, we have uh, laws in place first of all uh, we have uh, a progressive constitution that uh, provides for affirmative action and then now uh, we also I also talked about uh, the gender policy but when you look at uh, at uh, at uh, 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 the legal framework and the policies that uh, govern financing in this country, uh, there has uh, been an inclusion of something like uh, a certification, gender certification, especially around budgeting. So if sectors are budgeting, they need to put into consideration the key sectors uh, that are mostly affect uh, women's access to capital, to financing. Mm. So our budgeting process of late has uh, kind of like a uh, adopted that in, and is kind of uh, progressive in terms of uh, ensuring that there is inclusion of the key sectors and areas that finance uh, the progress of uh, women in entrepreneurship and women in other areas. So those are some of the few that I can talk about. Okay, so do you, do you think this can address the, the issues affecting, affecting the women in terms of economic inclusion? I, I, I think they can, but now the challenge that we face as a country is that uh, I, I think government is uh, very indent, indebted, so most times they will tell you they don't have enough resources to effectively implement the policies and the programs that uh, ensure inclusion and empowerment of women. So that is uh, one of the, challenge that, the challenges that we face. If you look at our national budget, most of it is uh, financing mm. the debt that we have. So we hardly uh, have enough money that goes into the empowerment of women. Mm. Because the empowerment and uh, ensuring inclusion of women needs a holistic approach. Yeah, It's not just about ensuring that they are able to access the capital or the government programs, but uh, issues around health are affect women more than they affect men. Mm. Issues within education, you see the numbers of girls that drop out of school just because they cannot afford uh, sanitary pads, uh, just because uh, you know they cannot afford uh, the basic, basic needs that uh, uh, make them to stay in school. So all those issues affect the woman's economic progress or empowerment. So if we are to address that, we need to ensure that there is a holistic approach. Mm. And we need to ensure that there is investment in those sectors that will help this woman to be able to uh, progress and be able to compete mm. because we live in a competitive world mm. so women need to be up to speed. You see a lot of them are entangled in uh, care work. The number of women that are entangled in care work is Wait. just a lot. Wait, so even when care work 
Uh, so for the care work, I mean uh, this kind of work that involves uh, if someone is sick, mm. it's like definitely a woman. Almost like, okay. The, like the palliative care. It is, it, it is the woman who will uh, give up their work. It's the woman who will give up their business to go and uh, take care of the sick, look after the children. If uh, you're a couple and you're working, and then you have issues around uh, child care, so if a decision is to be made on who has to stay home and take care of the children, it's still a woman that will give up and say okay I'll be home and uh, take care of the children so all those issues still uh, affect the woman but going forward I think what is uh, important is that uh, we need to ensure that uh, we have men on board and we work with them as partners in development absolutely yeah I was because Mm. Because 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 at times when uh, we push for women empowerment uh, uh, alone is mm. that uh, we've uh, gotten some backlash in a way, mm. but also uh, in instances or areas where men too have uh, been empowered in terms of them understanding and appreciating the role of a woman or the, in the woman empowerment. Yes. Yeah. So there is a likelihood that some of the men will appreciate and they will actually become partners or support or even be mentors. Mm. For, for for young women and even uh, their wives hmm. yeah so. yes yeah, so but, but, but as as we talk about also the involvement of of men in you know uh, participating or in empowering women we also don't have to forget that the empowerment also starts you know between me and you to i can also empower you if i'm in for instance a, a higher position, position yeah, right. in, in leadership or you know in society mm -hmm. as a woman i i am supposed you know yeah, to that empower is very you true. but yeah. we hear that uh, there has been concerned that women leaders are the worst enemies to the growth of empowerment of women. How true is this? Yeah, to some extent it's true, but we need to appreciate that there are women who have tried their level best in terms of uh, empowering young women. But uh, we've seen that there are those women who are want to keep, you know, their political positions. So they know that uh, uh, if a young woman is empowered, if uh, she becomes economically empowered, then that is uh, a threat to their positions or to their power. Mm -hmm. Because they will, they will become their competitors. We've worked with young women who are crying about that. And and the fact that uh, uh, these young women don't have uh, the finances to finance their campaigns for elections, so there's a likelihood that uh, these women who are already there will, will, will want these young women to keep like that so that they are not a threat to their uh, political positions. So okay. that has happened a lot. But hmm. I see a lot of opportunities, even if it is not uh, through the women who are already in those in positions mm -hmm. there are a lot of civil society organizations uh, women uh, organizations and other development uh, partners mm -hmm. that are doing a great a great job in terms of uh, mentoring and ensuring that they're empowering the young women so i would like to encourage the young women not to just look out uh, for those women that are in those political positions and all that, but look out for opportunities within civil society organizations and development partners, but also opportunities that come through other mentors within communities so that they are empowered enough. Mm. And then also the other one is that uh, usually uh, for young people, the challenge that we face uh, and that affects even the young women is that at times we want quick gains. We don't want to start small. And, like and, and, and trust the process. And trust the, the process. So uh, for, the, for some of the young women that uh, you're talking about, a young woman would uh, want to go straight to parliament. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> But it's very important for you to become a leader at the local level, level. so that uh, you develop your skills, your capacity, your uh, legislative you know kind of like a capacity so that by the time it gets to when you're supposed to be in parliament you have the finances that you need and also you have the skills that will sustain you up there because yes. it's not easy for you to sustain yourselves mm. up there uh, well when you were submitting you did mention something that uh, you know caught my eye you, you did say that uh, you know when it comes to the families and decisions to do with the families usually it is the woman that has to give up Yes. Uh, sacrifice and mm. you know come in to fill in that gap so what do you think can be done to ensure equitable growth between uh, the woman empowerment or economic growth and their families yeah so um, as we conclude the conversation yeah so so, so that is re really going to be a process because now you will have to have to try to dismantle kind of like uh, uh, 
the 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 the, the, the patriarchy uh, kind of like a society and the cultural norms and practices that we have around because uh, uh, it is those that dictate what a woman should do and what a man should do but that will take us a process but there is some achievement mm. but it will take us a process mm. and like i said in one way or the other we need a, a multi stakeholder kind of like engagement and approach where we need to have cultural leaders on board religious leaders on board so that they are able to constantly engage the both of them, the men and the women, for them to understand that uh, if they work together, if they support each other, then there is going to be uh, more development than if uh, only one person was empowered to be able to uh, work okay. or to be able to do a business. Okay. Yeah. So, Tepista, in your closing remarks, where do we go from here? So from here, uh, what I would encourage is that uh, we need all stakeholders on board. Mm. And then if we are to be able to achieve uh, inclusion and uh, economic empowerment for women, we need to start them young. Most times we need to target them when they are old, when they are already taken up by, you know, challenges in society and all that. We need to catch them young. If we get them young, then there is a likelihood they will grow through the process. They will know what they want. They will work towards uh, uh, that kind of like uh, uh, goal. Because uh, looking at the number of young women that uh, become pregnant at an early age, is really alarming. Looking at those that are dropping out of school, it's really alarming. And uh, the illiteracy levels amongst women mm. is one of the greatest challenges to their uh, progress economically, politically, and even socially. OK. Yeah. Well, thank you, Tapista, for speaking to us. Thanks well, for there you have me. it. Uh, that conversation takes us in for a short break. We return with news from the world of sport.